Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. In this video, we are going to generate the basic concept about production systems, facilities and manufacturing support systems. This video is the first class of our course on industrial automation, computer integrated manufacturing and materials handling. We will cover all related topics one by one. Before starting, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, just click on subscribe and press the bell icon. Here, we come up with new videos on different subjects to make the academic studies easier for you. So, into the topic. The word manufacturing derives from two Latin words, minus, hand, and factus, make, so that the combination means made by hand. This was the way manufacturing was accomplished when the word first appeared in the English language around 1567. Commercial goods of those times were made by hand. Workers had to specialize in their tasks. Rather than overseeing the fabrication of the entire product, they were responsible for only a small part of the total work. Slowly but surely, the systems of production were being developed. The systems of production are essential in modern manufacturing. So, that's where our topic comes in. Production systems. A production system is a collection of people, equipment, and procedures organized to perform the manufacturing operations of a company. It consists of two major components. Number 1. Facilities. The physical facilities of the production system include equipment. The way the equipment is laid out, and the factory in which the equipment is located. And number 2. Manufacturing support systems. These are the procedures used by the company to manage production and to solve the technical and logistics problems encountered in ordering materials, moving the work through the factory, and ensuring that products meet quality standards. Product design and certain business functions are included in the manufacturing support systems. In modern manufacturing operations, portions of the production system are automated or computerized. In addition, production systems include people. People make these systems work. In general, direct labor people, blue color workers, are responsible for operating the facilities, and professional staff people, white collar workers, are responsible for the manufacturing support systems. Now, we will discuss in details about both facilities and manufacturing support systems. Facilities The facilities in the production system consist of the factory, production machines and tooling material handling equipment, inspection equipment, and computer systems that control the manufacturing operations. Facilities also include the plant layout, which is the way the equipment is physically arranged in the factory. The equipment is usually organized into manufacturing systems, which are the logical groupings of equipment and workers that accomplish the processing and assembly operations on parts and products made by the factory. Manufacturing systems can be individual work cells consisting of a single production machine and a worker assigned to that machine. More complex manufacturing systems consist of collections of machines and workers, for example, a production line. The manufacturing systems come in direct physical contact with the parts and or assemblies being made. They touch the product. In terms of human participation in the processes performed by the manufacturing systems, three basic categories can be distinguished as we can see in these figures, a. Manual work systems, b. Work machine systems, and c. Automated systems. Manual work systems. A manual work system consists of one or more workers performing one or more tasks without the aid of power tools. Manual material handling tasks are common activities in manual work systems. Production tasks commonly require the use of hand tools, such as screwdrivers and hammers. When using hand tools, a work holder is often employed to grasp the work part and position it securely for processing. Examples of production-related manual tasks involving the use of hand tools include a machinist using a file to round the edges of a rectangular part that has just been milled. A quality control inspector using a micrometer to measure the diameter of a shaft. A material handling worker using a dolly to move cartons in a warehouse. A team of assembly workers putting together a piece of machinery using hand tools. Work machine systems. In a work machine system, 
a human worker operates powered equipment, such as a machine tool or other production machine. This is one of the most widely used manufacturing systems. Work machine systems include combinations of one or more workers and one or more pieces of equipment. The workers and machines are combined to take advantage of their relative strengths and attributes, which are listed in this table. Humans Sense unexpected stimuli Develop new solutions to problems Cope with abstract problems Adapt to change Generalize from observations Learn from experience Make decisions based on incomplete data Machines Perform repetitive tasks consistently Store large amounts of data Retrieve data from memory reliably Perform multiple tasks simultaneously Apply high forces and power Perform simple computations quickly Make routine decisions quickly Examples of worker machine systems include the following A machinist operating an engine lathe to fabricate a part for a product A fitter and an industrial robot working together in an arc welding work cell A crew of workers operating a rolling mill that converts hot steel slabs into flat plates a production line in which the products are moved by mechanized conveyor and the workers at some of the stations use power tools to accomplish their processing or assembly tasks. Automated systems An automated system is one in which a process is performed by a machine without the direct participation of a human worker. Automation is implemented using a program of instructions combined with a control system that executes the instructions. Power is required to drive the process and to operate the program and control system. These terms will be defined more completely later in this video series. There is not always a clear distinction between worker machine systems and automated systems, because many worker machine systems operate with some degree of automation. Two levels of automation can be identified, semi-automated and fully automated. A semi-automated machine performs a portion of the work cycle under some form of program control, and a human worker tends to the machine for the remainder of the cycle, by loading and unloading it, or by performing some other task each cycle. A fully automated machine is distinguished from its semi-automated counterpart by its capacity to operate for an extended period of time with no human attention. Extended period of time means longer than one work cycle. A worker is not required to be present during each cycle. Instead, the worker may need to tend the machine every tenth cycle, or every hundredth cycle. An example of this type of operation is found in many injection molding plants, where the molding machines run on automatic cycles, but periodically the molded parts at the machine must be collected by a worker. Figure C depicts a fully automated system. The semi-automated system is best portrayed by Figure B. In certain fully automated processes, one or more workers are required to be present to continuously monitor the operation, and make sure that it performs according to the intended specifications. Examples of these kinds of automated processes include complex chemical processes, oil refineries, and nuclear power plants. The workers do not actively participate in the process except to make occasional adjustments in the equipment settings, perform periodic maintenance, and spring into action if something goes wrong. Manufacturing Support Systems To operate the production facilities efficiently, a company must organize itself to design the processes and equipment, plan and control the production orders, and satisfy product quality requirements. These functions are accomplished by manufacturing support systems, people and procedures by which a company manages its production operations. Most of these support systems do not directly contact the product, but they plan and control its progress through the factory. Manufacturing support involves a sequence of activities, as depicted in this figure. The activities consist of four functions that include much information flow and data processing. 1. Business functions. 2. Product design, 3. Manufacturing planning, and 4. Manufacturing control. Business functions. The business functions are the principal means by which the company communicates with the customer. They are, therefore, the beginning and the end of the information processing sequence. Included in this category are sales and marketing, sales forecasting, order entry, and customer billing. 
The order to produce a product typically originates from the customer and proceeds into the company through the sales department of the firm. The production order will be in one of the following forms, 1. An order to manufacture an item to the customer's specifications, 2. A customer order to buy one or more of the manufacturer's proprietary products, or, 3. An internal company order based on a forecast of future demand for a proprietary product. Product Design if the product is manufactured to customer design, the design has been provided by the customer, and the manufacturer's product design department is not involved. If the product is to be produced to customer specifications, the manufacturer's product design department may be contracted to do the design work for the product as well as to manufacture it. If the product is proprietary, the manufacturing firm is responsible for its development and design. The sequence of events that initiates a new product design often originates in the sales department. The direction of information flow is indicated in this figure. The departments of the firm that are organized to accomplish product design might include research and development, design engineering, and perhaps a prototype shop. Manufacturing planning The information and documentation that constitute the product design flows into the manufacturing planning function. The information processing activities in manufacturing planning include process planning, master scheduling, material requirements planning, and capacity planning. Process planning consists of determining the sequence of individual processing and assembly operations needed to produce the part. The manufacturing engineering department is responsible for planning the processes and related technical details such as tooling. Manufacturing planning includes logistics issues, commonly known as production planning. The authorization to produce the product must be translated into the master production schedule, which is a listing of the products to be made, the dates on which they are to be delivered, and the quantities of each. Based on this master schedule, the individual components and sub-assemblies that make up each product must be scheduled. Raw materials must be purchased or requisitioned from storage. Parts must be ordered from suppliers, and all of these items must be planned so they are available when needed. The computations for this planning are made by material requirements planning. In addition, the master schedule must not list more quantities of products than the factory is capable of producing each month with its given number of machines and manpower. Capacity planning is concerned with determining the human and equipment resources of the firm and checking to make sure that the production plan is feasible. Manufacturing control. Manufacturing control is concerned with managing and controlling the physical operations in the factory to implement the manufacturing plans. The flow of information is from planning to control as indicated in this figure. Information also flows back and forth between manufacturing control and the factory operations. Included in this function are shop floor control, inventory control, and quality control. Shop floor control deals with the problem of monitoring the progress of the product as it is being processed, assembled, moved, and inspected in the factory. Shop floor control is concerned with inventory in the sense that the materials being processed in the factory are work in process inventory. Thus, shop floor control and inventory control overlap to some extent. Inventory control attempts to strike a proper balance between the risk of too little inventory with possible stockouts of materials, and the carrying cost of too much inventory. It deals with such issues as deciding the right quantities of materials to order and when to reorder a given item when stock is low. The function of quality control is to ensure that the quality of the product and its components meet the standards specified by the product designer. To accomplish its mission, quality control depends on inspection activities performed in the factory at various times during the manufacture of the product. Also, raw materials and component parts from outside sources are sometimes inspected when they are received, and final inspection and testing of the finished product is performed to ensure functional quality and appearance. Quality control also includes data collection and problem-solving approaches to address process problems related to quality, such as statistical process control, SPC, and Six Sigma. So, we have learned about production systems, facilities, and manufacturing support systems in details. In the next video, we will discuss in details about automation in production systems. Thank you.